Thank you for tuning in to the Electric Church Podcast. My name is Craig. I am the host of the Electric Church Podcast. And on this episode, I was joined by Oxy and Lil Candle, uh, two local musicians. Oxy is a lyricist and rapper. And um, Lil Candle is a bass player. Um, they both uh, produce together and uh, I believe produce on their own as well. Um, so we had a great conversation um, on St. Patrick's Day, um, just before or right as all the COVID-19 stuff started to get really, really serious. So we kind of touched on that, but then just tried to um, talk about some other things. We talked about Star Wars, uh, and we talked a whole bunch about music and influences and um how they go about writing and producing their music. Uh, so this was a lot of fun. I really enjoy uh, talking to local artists um, about how they got into it and what they do. And uh, it was a cool little journey, and I hope to have them back on soon. Uh, so without further ado, here is my conversation with Oxy and Lil Candle. <laughs> Check Micah oh. Checka. All right. Thank you for tuning into the Electric Church Podcast. My name is Craig. I am the host of the Electric Church Podcast. Oh, I don't even have those plugged in. So don't worry about it. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, joining me today, um, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Jordan Oaks. I also go by Oaksy. And this is Lil Candle. All right, guys. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, so uh, thanks we got, for having us. Yeah, we got a little sake here. Salute, fellas. Here's up to the sake. Shout out, sake. Cheers. Shout out, sake. Oh, good stuff. Mm, good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so go ahead and uh, tell us. You guys are both musicians. Uh, why don't you go Correct. ahead and, and uh, tell us how you got started in music? All right. Well, <clears throat> I mean. I feel like both of us are going to have like somewhat long stories, but I feel like I can like go through it in a somewhat quick fashion. I feel like uh, my, foes, my first exposure to music just came from my family. Fortunately, my mom uh, has been a musician since I was, I mean, a young child. She's been even before then, before I was even born. Uh, and she was a piano teacher. So like really my first introduction would have been piano lessons when I was in like elementary school. Uh, and then, you know, I kept up with that somewhat casually. My love for music started in, like, middle school when I started getting into some of the artists that I listen to nowadays, you know, like Gorillaz, Eminem. Uh, yeah, I could keep naming them, but there's plenty more. Uh, either way, uh, and then, but when I actually got my own personal, like, I mean, okay, I should also add, I played bass guitar for... Again, casually, I wasn't, like, super into it. I wish I was. I, I feel bad saying that in front of Dawson, but, like, I played bass guitar in, like, our school band for a couple years, like, from sixth grade through eighth grade. But, again, like, my, I feel like when I really actually took my own personal choice into music, when it was, like, my biggest step towards music, would have been when I actually started freestyling in, like, eighth grade. Me and my homies. It was still actually kind of messing around then, too, but, like, we just started freestyling, and it was something, like, just was really fun, like maybe we freestyled, I don't know, once every month or every couple of months, and then I started actually writing like shortly after that, maybe like ninth or 10th grade. Again, it was really casual, and then that like slowly progressed to where my junior year, somewhat early into my junior year, so I would have been, what, 17 at the time? And what, and I, what year would this have been? Um, 20, what? 2014 or 2013 okay about yeah two, so 2013 ish and like that was when I was like oh shit I like really enjoy music actually I started I was writing every day at this point you know like even jotting stuff down on my phone jotting stuff down on my notebook primarily through hip-hop a lot of hip-hop stuff and then you know that was when I was like into my raw like like constant like swearing and just speaking whatever was on my mind talking shit about my ex-girlfriend all that stuff and then I got FL Studio that same right about that same time period when I was really getting into writing and stuff like that and that 
you know, that, that was like when it was really strong though. Junior, senior year was like, that was like my start. I hadn't released until the end of my senior year though. I released my first song, so that would have been 2016, midway through about probably like the summer of 2016. Like again, shortly after I graduated, I had been preparing content, all this different stuff. And then here we are today, 2020, nice. years later. Could you just move the stand just so it's not touching the table? There we go. Yeah, every little clank's going to pick up on there. Um, so, uh, all right, so you said you and your buddies would uh, freestyle. Would you, like, would somebody beatbox? Or, <laughs> uh, like, what What did you do for a beat that you would, or would you just, like, go a cappella? What would you do? So that's actually what's kind of hilarious. Is get like, right, right yeah, up to that. Yeah, yeah. so what's actually kind of uh, hilarious about it is that, um, the first, probably like the first two, three times that we were doing it, we're literally like up on my bunk bed. We, I'm sure we had like raided some alcohol from my parents' cupboards or their parents' cupboards. Uh, and we had like literally like one of the first two sessions. I haven't like told this in a long time, but like one of the first couple of sessions, I remember like rocking my bunk bed like in a humping motion. I don't know if I was the one who did it or if it was my homie Mikey. Total goon squad type shit. Literally like sitting there like eh, eh, eh. And like that was the beat, like literally. Oh my god! And we're, so I was like, "Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm sitting on a bed, like humping a um, bunky, you know, like just like the goofiest, like most simplistic, like second grade freaking rhymes you could think of." Oh my god! I'm so yeah. glad I asked. <laughs> so like literally, that was like the early, early stuff. Mikey, shout out Mikey if he's listening to this, but like that was the first ones. And then by the time. After, like, maybe, again, it was very casual, so a couple times, you know. And then once we had done that for maybe, I don't know, like, eight months after that, maybe a year, is when we actually started, like, looking up YouTube instrumentals. Like, going on YouTube, looking up, oh, hip-hop instrumental or, like, okay. an instrumental from an, a song that we enjoyed. Like, a certain, whatever, like, maybe it was a hip-hop artist we actually listened to or just a random, like, hip-hop rap beat. Type it in and then... Like, ching, like, something would pop up. And then we started going on, like, burn cruises. By the time we got our license, our driver's license, that was, like, the thing. Like, we'd be like, oh, let's go on a cruise. You know, we'll, like, we'll like smoke something, you know, like, get some of that reefer rolling and then be like, now let's, like, spit something. And that was when it actually started to get decent, where it was like, oh, dude, like, like we'd actually talk about a line or two. Be like, whoa, like, did you hear that line there? You know, so, like, that was when it took a step up from humping a, a bed and, like, creaking sixth grade rhymes, you know? For sure. All right. And Mr. Dawson, uh, how did you get started in music? Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, yeah, unlike Jordan, I'm the only musician in my entire family, both sides. So that's sick. Um, so I didn't really have um, anyone in the household that played music before I was born, but... Get right up next to that microphone, brother. There you go. But, uh, <laughs> but I always just like I don't know. I was always jamming music since I was since I was little. Like pretty much every day, I'm bumping music all day whenever I can. And I don't know, just listening to like bands like I don't know, just like growing up with like bands like Green Day, Corn, Gorillas, all that stuff. Just like oh, definitely wanted to just pick up a bass because like bass and all those bands are just fucking groovy so it's like yeah i picked up a bass probably like seventh grade yeah like seventh grade and then about 10th grade i joined band and i played bass and band all the way till i graduated i'm good right now i'll take a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah. inside yeah i thought so, <laughs> so jordan emptied his glass i thought he might want some more oh he might yeah okay yeah, let me pour that for you brother Apparently it's it's custom that you're you're not yeah. supposed to pour your own sake, oh. so. That's some like OG Japanese shit. Yeah. I mean, you can fill me up a tiny bit. Thanks. There we go. All right. All right. Yeah. So, after I graduated though, uh, that's when I formed my band Furnace. You know, Furnace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steady played in Furnace for about five years, and. Unfortunately, just due to some some things, we uh, disbanded. But it was for the best. I got to pursue my own personal music way more, and I've had way more time to actually sit down and learn new things and write new things, make new sounds. <coughs> and that's pretty much what I've been doing since like 2017. I released my first EP, Curtains, 
It's like an instrumental EP. I just made it like sitting in class, just sitting in the back of class, just making random beats on my fucking phone or whatever I was doing at the time. Nice. Oh, yeah. And then I didn't really release anything for about almost two years after that, like a couple singles. But then I dropped my album Other last year, March 20th. What's the date today? Uh, 17th. 17th? So yeah. in three days, Saint, yeah. St. Patty's it Day. It will be Other's first birthday. Nice. So, yeah. That's Very sick. Very cool. Very proud of that. And I don't know. Got a lot of, a lot of, lot of new shit cooking up for this year. Yeah. With yeah. a bunch of different people a bunch of different types of music all over the place all over the place nice and i'd like to add that um the first time i actually ever produced something like in like the music production realm <laughs> dawson actually still has it i'm pretty sure right like it's on, probably, it's I, somewhere like in my it, google drive yeah like, that, that was be, i mean that, that was that was probably around 2014 as well. Some yeah, like it was, it was, it was early. Yeah, like I, I don't even think I had my driver's license at the time. Like I had maybe I hadn't even really gotten into like smoking too much. But I just know we're ch- hanging out, hanging out with our mutual cousin Alex. We're me and him are me and Do- me and Mr. Candle are not cousins, but we have a mutual cousin. Mm-hmm. It's weird. Everyone, <laughs> everyone around here can say that. It's like a small town. Like, and my cousin. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it was like he had this uh, program on his phone. I can't remember what it was called. But it, it had a decent amount of, like, ha- like pretty cool tools, and you had been already producing on that for, like, a little while on that yeah. phone, and you started showing me some of the cool tools. So literally one of my first things that I've produced, actually, was with Mr. Candle here mm-hmm. and exposed to by this man. So he's definitely been influencing me for, I mean, the better part of, what, seven years, like, if not more. But, like, you and I really started getting into it, Yeah. Cause what, after graduation? Yeah, because... Well, because we linked a little after graduation, but then we didn't talk for, like, two years randomly. Yeah. And then, <laughs> for some reason, I don't know why, and then randomly one day you're like, hey, I think we should, I think you just said we should play, like, a show together or something. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to play this show or something? And I was like, yeah, sure. You lived in Fargo. I lived in Duluth. Made the fucking five-hour trek all the way to Fargo, came and practiced. And then after we did that, we just kind of, we just kind of kept it continually going from there. Yeah, so our first mutual performance, 2017, then? All right. When was Cram Jam one? I swear that was, like... November 2017. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cram Jam, November 2017. Shout out Cram Jam, too. That's just going to keep rolling. with it. Like, by the time that's, like, 10 years from now, I don't even know if it'll have the same name, but that's going to be legendary. So, uh, you mentioned uh, that he was an influence on you. I was going to ask both of you guys, uh, who were your major influences growing up that... Uh, that helped develop your sound. Yeah, well, like I said, like when I was really young, I was like super into Green Day. You know, Mike Dern's got them. He's got them licks. You know, mm-hmm. so, so I definitely picked up a bass after that, and then had a corn obsession. Still have a corn obsession. They, I don't know, feel the just fucking with that low A string. Mm-hmm. It doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. So I had to pick <laughs> up a five string, and then ever since then, I've just been listening to like a lot of like. 70s, 80s, and like present funk, you know, mm-hmm. you know, Gorillas, uh, New Jabes, um, big, big Daft Punk guy. Yeah. Daft Punk, Daft Punk's got to be number one for me. But Parliament at all, or huh? Parliament Funkadelic. I don't know. George Clinton. Oh, oh George yeah. Clinton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the P Funk, yeah. 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 I don't know, not, not super big into him. No, or, I, I just haven't dabbled. I suppose. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm just saying. Bo- like, Bootsy Collins can lay it down, man. He's he's a legendary bassist yeah, for for the oh yeah. punk. Okay, yeah. But, big. Um, oh, another huge influence is definitely Les Claypool from, okay, from nice. Primus. Yeah, yeah. Big Les Claypool guy. That guy can do fucking five other bands too. Anything. Yeah. yeah, and like five other bands. Yeah, his hand yeah. motion blows my mind. Like how he hits those notes in this like, solid fluid. I, you can't even see it. Like. I know. Like, I can play he... some Primus bass lines, but I like, can't play them to perfection just because how flawlessly he does it. Yeah. And he fucking sings at the same time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and he's going to be Metallica's bassist, but they're like, no, you're too <laughs> fucking goofy. <laughs> right. so, yeah. So. Yeah, he would have brought a different element to that band for sure. Yeah. Would have I mean, made a difference. I, I wouldn't have complained. <laughs> I feel like he could have done... He can write anything on anything. Great. Jordan, you? Um... I know this is going to be, like, super cliche, but literally, like, one of the bigger influences early, early on was Eminem. I mean, of course, it was just, like, this rapper. I'm like, oh, my God, he looked like me. This is, like, six, <laughs> this is like sixth grade. This is, like, sixth grade, Jordan, you know? Um, 
my music influences have been like all over, you know, over the years, as you can imagine. But especially early on, yeah, Eminem. Um, like right when I was about to like start getting into my own personal rapping and writing, I was listening to like a lot of Hobson. Um, I'm trying to think of who early on. I mean, it. Watsky. Yeah, Watsky. Yeah. Shout out Watsky if you're here. <laughs> yeah, seriously though. Yeah, Watsky was another one. Um, but now I'll, I'll just throw out like the ones, especially now that influence my current sound. John Bellion. Uh, I'm not sure how many are familiar with John Bellion, but uh, just he's a pro like he produces a lot of his own stuff. Nowadays he works like a lot with external artists, but he was just one because like when I first started listening to him, I was like. Oh shit! Like he's doing exactly like kind of what I'm aiming for, like in his own, like creating and songwriting and like really, in the production of his own songs. So like once I like listened to him, it influenced me a lot. And Kid Cudi too, like just something about like his spacey sound and everything like that, really was influencing me at that time. Again, Hobson, uh, but now it's been like all over. You know, now I just have so many like through D Dawson, like uh, Daft Punk. It was weird because right, right when Dawson had showed it to me, it was like. I don't know why, but at the time it was like an acquired taste. Like they weren't one I was like initially into. Like I was like, oh yeah, I like Daft Punk. And now it's like, if I could see any artist in the world right now, literally I would want to go to a Daft Punk show just because of how rare that is. But yeah, Daft Punk, Gorillaz, uh, the influences go wide. You know, like in the hip hop world, I, I'm a hip hop head. So like J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, as of lately, Joyner Lucas, uh, Logic, like all these, all these guys in the hip hop world that I really just got to give big respects to. And then every single, like every single day, I'm always trying to approach new stuff. Like even this winter, I randomly went through a weird '60s phase where I was like listening to '60s and like early '70s music, and that bumped up to like late '70s and '80s music. And like, I don't know, like some. And sometimes I'm like bad with artist names, but then I just hear this sound where I'm like, ooh. Ooh, like I, even though I'm not always like like one to just click on to like some sort of artist right away. It's like I hear a melody or I hear a certain groove, and especially lyrics. I'm constantly analyzing lyrics, so like, it it's different all the time. Like even just our sound taste today was just like all over the spectrum. Like so. Oh yeah, we were bumping all sorts of shit. Yeah, it, you know, it always uh, it 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 amazes me that uh, surf guitar hasn't been uh, ripped and and used and looped in any sort of surf what? guitar yeah you know uh oh my god you know like dick dale uh or uh merce galoo from from, from pulp no, no, fiction no, 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 no. yeah yeah. Oh, okay. yeah yeah pipeline you know what i mean like i can't believe I yeah dude like it has this super twangy high-end uh it blows my mind that it hasn't been sampled by any rap artist maybe i'm about to be the one right, who does right. that honestly because the sampling thing is really groovy too if you, <laughs> if you do it right it, it is an art form and yeah i've dabbled with it as well and I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. keep that in my head. Bro. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a couple songs I can think of that, like. Please do. Yeah, have a groovy riff that you could rip. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Well, uh, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, you want to? I mean, there's plenty you want to talk about, I'm sure. But any anything on your mind right now? The whole world's going crazy with COVID-19. No, right. But some uh, like quarantine type shit. Yeah. We're gonna be that fresh of breath there for y'all. Um, what? Shout out Star Wars. Yeah. Something. Yeah, um, yeah, what you guys doing? Yeah, the new uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars episodes are coming out. I'm not going to spoil anything if you think I'm going to spoil anything, so don't worry, please. <laughs> yeah, we're not here to spoil shit, but seriously, though, I don't know how many of y'all are, like, actual Star Wars nerds, but goddamn. <laughs> yeah, if you are a Star Wars fan and you enjoy the prequel era especially, definitely watch Star Wars The Clone Wars. It might be some of the best Star Wars content in existence. It's the most, it's like an animated series that... You know, is yeah. would like commonly be watched by children, but don't don't let that fool you. It is it's not even a kid's show. That is crazy. It's yeah, like like maybe right away it's a little more like kiddish because it was just airing. But like by the time you get a couple seasons in, like you are deep and there's no yeah, no. I, <laughs> I I started watching it um, a little more than a month ago after I finished Mandalorian. Hey. Um, yeah, I love the Mandalorian. One of my good. earlier podcasts was like 13 Reasons Why It's Better Than the Movies. Yeah. I, I really dug the show. Yeah, and, and yeah, I, I'm really liking the Clone Wars. So, how deep are you on Clone Wars? Uh, I'm just about done with the first season. Hey, My girlfriend I'll, does I'll, not like I'll, it at all, so I I'll, have I'll a hard time. Just, 
Got to sneak in episodes, you know? Yeah, okay. n- yeah just, dude, just keep rolling. And yeah, like, no, and then, I like it already. Oh, yeah, but, like, once you get to the later seasons, you see, like, the animation, like, take a next step up. And yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. gets It gets crazy. And, like, the new animation on, like, the brand new episodes is, like, I mean, Disney's yeah. funding it, so it's, like, yeah. some of the best animation <laughs> right, I've ever right, yeah. seen. Like, yeah, the newest, like, animation from Disney is absolutely insane. Um, That uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3, I don't know if you guys saw that. I I actually want to. I actually want to. It was absolutely insane. Like, I'd never seen animation like that. Like, not only did the flames look real, but they actually, like, they actually treated it like a camera. Like, they would pan, and they would do, like, mimic of, like, helicopter shots and stuff. You know what I mean? So, like... They're just doing some next level shit with animation nowadays. Yeah. yeah, and even one thing I feel like, and Star Wars has been doing it for decades, even in the <laughs> in the past, you know, up until this day. But especially now in the video games, all of it. One thing that I feel like some people don't always realize, it's almost on the subconscious realm, the sounds and the music, mm-hmm. just how visually, like, you could close your eyes and be entertained by whether you're watching, again, the animated or the oldies, yeah. whatever it is, and even their voice actors, again, like, on a sound level, like, the, the blasters, the freaking explosions, the, like, traveling through space, and then you, and then the music hits, and it's, like, rolling my heartstrings, it's like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, like... Well, John Williams is insane. Like, he's definitely one of the best composers ever. But I don't know. Like, definitely, like you were saying, just any sound effects or anything like that. Like, I play Battlefront 2, like, on my PS4. And, like, Mm -hmm. I have, like, my nice headphones. (laughs) And, like, listening to just... You just get immersed, like, into the game because how much you just are hearing and what's going on. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I always think about the, like, the thermal imploder. Or what's that one grenade? It's like... <laughs> 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 yeah, it's literally the craziest sounding shit ever. And, like, there's one where you, like, throw down this bubble shield. And when the bullets hit the bubble shield or the blasters, it's like... <laughs> just, like, again, the sounds yeah. alone, I'm just always blown away. And especially, you know, in the TV show again and, like, in The Mandalorian... Like, the soundtrack to that, it's, like, the weirdest because you almost – it gives you this Wild West vibe. Yeah. But still, it's got that futuristic and, like, even that, I always just get inspired by – how's that? Like, the, the I don't know, the Mandalorian theme song, though. Yeah, that's dirty as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys ever see uh, Good, Mad, and the Ugly or any of the spaghetti westerns? Uh, it's very like, much. It's, it's been it, it's been a while. I feel like they came on like an yeah, AMC it, when it was like five in the morning, and I was like it, not being able to yeah, sleep or something. Yeah, <laughs> those old spaghetti restaurants with by uh, Sergio Leone um, with Quinn Eastwood in them. If you uh, if you revisit those you, and then watch Mandalorian, I mean, without yeah. it, you just you just watch those, then you. Oh no, see, I can tell. Like, it's like it's always yeah, like, even how before much? like. When the first trailer came out, I'm like, oh, it's going to have some sort of Western. Yeah, yeah, vibe. yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Even, yeah, down to the soundtrack. Like, they were, uh, they're very much oh, borrowing. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I like how they, just like the mix of, like, the Star Wars sounding instruments. And then, like, they use, like, a lot of acoustic guitar and stuff, too. And Yeah. So, yeah, and, uh, like, like yeah. um, the way in old Westerns you would hear people move, like, on the, you know, wooden floors <laughs> and their their uh, their uh, spurs. Like, you can hear the Mandalorian move. He's got all this armor on. And, yeah, and you can actually yeah. hear him move. Like, I felt like that was a nod to the Westerns for sure. But I yeah. always think of the most, like, classic, like, Western melody. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good <laughs> and the bad and the ugly. Yep, yep. <laughs> that is, that's, that's yeah. from that? Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yep, yeah. Even when I don't know, I know sometimes. <laughs> yeah, if you, like, uh, uh, go on YouTube, it, like, the Danish uh, orchestra did, like, a oh, like, whole series of, of uh, the music from all of those westerns. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, wild. That's, like, I feel like sometimes I'm yeah, with a super wild west. No, I feel like sometimes I'm the most cultured, uncultured fuck out there because <laughs> I'll, like, know some things, but, like, I, didn't, I literally didn't watch Pulp Fiction until, I mean... I knew it. I knew what it was. I had seen, like, some clips from it, and, you know, there's always, like, people who are influenced by it, and then you, like, catch yeah. it, one of the influencers. But, yeah, I didn't even watch Pulp Fiction until, like, probably six months ago. And I, li- that was, like, the first movie where I'm just sitting and watching alone. I remember at one point I was, like, laying in my bed, and, like, I had to, like, sit up. I first was, like, sitting up. I'm like, whoa, okay. And then I, like, had to, like, stand up, and I literally was like... <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I was, like, in my room alone, like... 
giving a round of applause, and then I walked back up and was like sitting like three feet from my TV, and I'm like, okay. Like, this is where I'm sitting for the rest of the movie. So, like, again, I'm always on the search for, like, new stuff like that because sometimes, like, people will be like, hey, do you know, like, this? Like, something, say, A, B, or C, something extremely iconic. And I'm like, no. <laughs> like, but I don't know. So, again, I'm cultured, but, like, uncultured at the same time. <laughs> Weird. In the closet, Hollywood. Wait, that's not... Maybe I'll take that back. Just cut that out. No, I, don't, I don't do any editing like that. Yeah, well, no. I wouldn't expect you to. No signs of shit, yeah. baby. Yeah, no, I. It's raw from the heart. <sighs> so, what's on you guys' mind? What, uh, what you've been thinking about as the world collapses around us? Um, That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not thinking about it, really. I mean, in a sense, I am. I mean, I'm staying safe and doing what I got to do. Mm-hmm. I'm surviving, you know. I'm surviving. Right. But I mean, not working for a little bit definitely gives me a lot more time and energy to put into music. Mm-hmm. Like the last three days, we've been doing quite a bit of music shit. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we've we've been on a mission. We've been getting some shit done. Just trying to get really comfortable. So like when all this shit hap- or stops happening, yeah. whenever that happens, it's like, over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That way we're ready to just. Yeah. Go hard for everyone. Yeah, embrace yeah. the like almost embracing the quarantine in the best aspect because you know a lot of it's weird how much this is gonna affect like our society and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't know. Like I said, we're trying to be that fresh of breath there. So like, I'm finding the fine balance between like being that crazy radical whatever, and also like oh I don't give a fuck like it doesn't matter type of thing because. Obviously, this this stuff matters right now. But it's like you know on like what we're thinking right now. Like even just as of like what we've been discussing today, I feel like, I don't know, we're, we're, we're setting ourselves up, especially in 2020, but moving forward, we're setting ourselves up for just like some awesomeness and this like creative flow that we're working on. Like, I feel like we've been like these, like we've been in training, like we've been these like samurais in training. Like I have countless people coming up to me like, oh yeah, like when are you going to release a new song? When are you going to release a new song? And like, I like almost have a hard time because as soon as I start talking about it, it's like yada yada yada, and they're in reality they don't care. They just want to see that it's released. Like they don't want to hear all the other stuff. But it's like, as an artist, like my and Daz, I feel I have a feeling he'll relate to the sentence. It's like as an artist, my progression from like my first song to like where I am now is unbelievable. And it's like I'm taking so much more time with music. And again, I, I'm sure he can relate with this as well. It's like to where we're like the fine details to like every single sound, every single lyric that's going into it, the concepts of it all. Like I feel like we've taken like such a deeper approach into our music. And like, again, that takes skill developing. Like it's not just something I'm not like, oh yeah, I'm just like jumping on a track. Like it's not, that's not my mindset. is isn't like, oh, like I'm hitting up this guy and like hitting his track quick and then like throwing out a song a week later. Like maybe at some point I'll be to a, like a position where I can really work at a, like fast, fast rate, but like where I'm at right now, it's like, again, sound development and like developing my own personal like breath work, freaking my flow, my cadence, like all this shit. And like the live thing had took me way out of my comfort zone, like being able to like, again, go up like, cause when you're doing a song in a studio, you know, you're doing these little takes, you're like, you're not being exposed when you're live, like you're on stage, like every single part of you is being watched and stuff like that. So that was like way out of our comfort zone. But yeah, where we're at right now, it's like once we, once we start finishing up what we're currently doing, I just feel like I sometimes imagine myself like an archer and I'm just like, I'm honing in this one shot. I'm going to loose my arrow, like send it as precise as possible, like hit that target and then I'm on to the next target. Like loosing my arrow, taking that time to focus, like send it. Like again, it's like, so I'm just like, where I'm at at least is like, ooh, like target one, like target two, like target three. And like, I feel like I'm setting myself up to be as accurate as possible for each one of those targets. And like those targets as of right now are my singles that I'm working on. And again, I'll almost let it speak for itself because it is fastly approaching will be like some new music that I'm really excited about and that can be adapted into my live show. But yeah, skills as an artist improving, definitely some training samurais. Indeed. So, so uh, now that you have sort of this new ear that you've been, you know, producing music for a while, do you ever think about revisiting some of those first songs mm-hmm. 
and yeah, we were talking about this last night. Yeah, last and night, like yeah. and and reproducing them it's, sort of with I a mean, new ear and sure. sort of just yeah. you know applying a new tempo and just uh, you know kind of almost not in, not starting from scratch but sort of rebuilding it. Yeah, in a sense, like I've done that like just on a couple of my songs, just on my album. I've definitely just came back and remixed it to how it needs to be. I still have like one or two I think need that as well. But then after that. I'm trying to definitely focus just more on, like, a new album. And like Jordan said, just being more precise and, like, making mm-hmm. sure that what I'm releasing is exactly how I want to release it. Because mm-hmm. I want to be able to, like, what's the point of just releasing track after track if you don't feel that track, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah so. I like, that, I like that you bring that up because, like, like what he said, we literally talked about that last night. Because I'm, like, sitting here and going back on some of live, like, live-wise where – some of the songs that, like, at least we perform on, the, like, the Oaksy set list uh, that are from three, coming up on four years, like, on the fourth year this summer will be, like, my first three, four, five songs. Yeah. And two of which we perform still to this day live. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, the current takes that I have on them just don't do them justice. So at some point, once I grow my catalog to, like, my more comforting level, until those tracks are to where I would want to be, they're going to be removed from streaming platforms. Because, like, exactly what you said, like, I feel like right now, like, I could do, like, so much more justice. Because, like, even I was, like, a decent songwriter at that time, you know? Early on, like, people, like, even someone could write their first song and, like, it's so raw and from the heart that literally the song is dope. Like, even if uh, whatever, like, the production level might not be as dope or whatever as it could be later on when they develop their skills. It's like, someone can write a really dope song early on, and that's how I feel about my older stuff, so I'm like, I, I definitely will revisit that stuff. Like, some point soon, I wouldn't be surprised if I, like, remove a decent chunk of my set list until, uh, or not, like, set list, but, like, my track list, if you will, on my online streaming stuff. Like, remove it, revisit, like, add some stuff. Even, like, Dawson's bass lines adds such a cool groove to, like, all my songs. And mm-hmm. that's not even in the studio version, which always I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah, I think there's only, like, one or two songs of yours out right now that actually have a live bass of mine in it. But pretty much every single track that we've been working on as of late has live bass in it. Mm-hmm. And all the old tracks that don't have live bass in it... Uh, have worked out just for the live version, so yeah. I can, yeah, I've just learned them and adapted to them, and they're fun as fuck to play live. Yeah, and even, I mean, again, there's like, there's and like some of the older tracks, even, you know, I've worked with other producers, whether it's like over the internet, and maybe I would keep the same instrumental or even just take a new approach with the instrumental, like still like, okay, this is the vibe, this is the tempo, I already have the lyrics and stuff. Now let's revisit, recreate this instrumental in our own unique way. That could be some of the approach, maybe for some of them. But yeah, definitely with the live bass, that's one thing I'm like, every time I'm like, dude, I need that. Like on Beast, even like, oh my God. Like I need some of these bass parts, just like I almost switch my cadence a little bit because I'm like, oh, this bass part like makes me want to like, like even though the snare or drum beat is hitting like, like on like this rhythm, like, Dawson maybe comes in like a little bit different, like a little bit different with that bass. And I almost follow him instead of like what I originally was. So like, even though it's the same, almost the same flow, it's like my delivery and my timing is like that touch off, but like so much cooler, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, Dawson, you mentioned that you were started like making stuff on your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys still uh, just uh, self-produce at home? You What kind of software do you use? Um... Well, for me personally, I don't really. I more just play like bass at home and write uh, mm-hmm. more things, and they like, just kind of document them on my phone. Mm-hmm. But then I usually come down here to Brainerd, and I produce with uh, Jordan Wren. Shout out Jordan Wren, Mr. Wren, I love you. Um, at Zenith Audio Recording, um, I actually recorded my album through him too, or we mixed and mixed it and everything at his studio. Ableton, right? Yeah, he uses Ableton, Ableton Live. Okay. And yeah, I really I he's just a wizard at it. Like mm-hmm. I just lay down the tracks and he and we work our magic, I suggest things. He's kinda like Yeah, audio yeah, it, engineering it, is a magic yeah, kind of it, its own. Yeah, it's it's definitely like a good mixed effort because like just what we make is like I can like have imagined like the sound I was going for changes to this and like I love it infinitely better than what I was thinking in my own mind. Mm-hmm. So like 
and that's who I'm going to be recording my second album through, too. And then I know Oaks has his own studio. Yeah, so, like, just with my home studio, it's got the most basic features that you would want for a home studio, but as far as I'm concerned, it's everything you need. And, like, even though I, I'm, like, due for certain upgrades and stuff like that, which will come slowly, I'm just going to trickle in upgrades, but it's, like, again, I'm, I'm, like, pretty comfortable with everything that I have right now, and it's, like, you know, I just have my whole room set up in a home studio sense. I'm sure if anyone out there is, like, a producer or, like, a sound audio, whatever, like, you know, they, they can relate, but I just have, like, my whole room acoustic foamed uh, to my liking or whatever. I got a mic set up with an audio interface, uh, a couple of studio monitors, uh, some other equipment I can like switch in and out if I want to spice it up a bit. You know, I got my keyboard, got like an additional smaller keyboard with a beat pad on it for producing. Uh, and then I use FL Studio, which is like my DAW, digital audio workstation. But, uh, and that's like, I feel like I still have a lot of growth to do on like DAWs, but like just with how far I've come on FL Studio, like I like I, I know exactly what I want and I know exactly how to get it out of that software just because I've been on it since uh, like what I was saying like my junior year so like 2013 or whatever. So again, I've like I've learned a lot about just that software. And if I were to ever switch like Pro Tools, I feel like I'd be able to adapt fast. But yeah, when it comes to like uh, like production, I do a lot of my own production, but also I I love working with people and that's what I'm trying to do more and more of is like externalize. And Dawson's one of my like ears that I get in on like almost every one of my projects. He's great at co-producing and being able to like even if he, he doesn't always know the exact tool, even sometimes I don't know the exact tool that is needed, but like at least if you know the aim, the approach, the vibe you're trying to get, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's at Jordan Ren's studio or at my studio, because me and Dawson do a lot of co-production, uh, a lot of times just having that extra person to be like, yo, maybe this sound should be more like this, you know, whether it's, again, it could be an infinite amount of things, but like uh, just having that extra ear to be like, oh, how do we get this? And then that's when you just start thinking, you're like, oh, hmm, and then it just brings up that whole new idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, working with other people, especially like I've been trying, like we have a track where I got like Larissa Love and on just like having another vocalist on there or something or bringing in like Dawson with the bass guitar parts. I want to start doing that more and more. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to be a one-man army, even though I sometimes consider myself to be. It's like working with other people, you get those other opinions, you can develop it in such a different way. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love having Dawson on co-producing. Even just lately, we went and pulled out some tracks I produced from, like, the last three years. Some of, like, my keepers, really. Like, ones I'm like, oh, this is dope. I want to do something with this at some point. Mm -hmm. And, like, we just regurgitate that, pull it out. I'm like... Oh, and then we just start going in. Oh, let's change this sound here. Like, change it. Start like tweaking. Like, ooh, what could we, what could we add that makes this cooler? Like, even and a lot of times it's like maybe it, it needs a live instrument, like something where we like go in and record that live instrument, whether it's piano, bass, guitar, etc. Or we're like, oh, we literally need another person. Like, maybe we want to get Shaggy in on like, mm -hmm. you know, recording. Shout out Shaggy Mutt, by the way, if he's listening. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you ever think of sampling some of those great Star Wars sounds that you Ooh. were just talking about Ooh. a few minutes ago? Well, I mean, it'd be fun to do like on a song, just use a bunch of different ones. I'm gonna have, almost have it just be like a Star Wars theme song, because mm -hmm. I mean, you could, I mean, there's hundreds yeah. and hundreds of sounds you could use just mm -hmm. throughout the movies and the shows and everything. But like. That should be a thing. Yeah, I mean, Actually. it should be a thing. Like, we'll probably do it at some point. I mean, why not? But, I don't know. Even, like, even like what you were saying, I don't know, like, when I was talking about the, the sound of the the plasma hitting the yeah, bubble yeah, shield. Yeah, just something yeah, like that. Straight yeah, straight up. We had, I know we've talked about it before, like, playing Battlefront, me being like, yo, that would be cool, like, for something. Because you can do so much tweaking once you have a sound recorded, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I have this, like, little robot thing my brother bought me. And I treat it with such respect so that when AI takes over, <laughs> like, they're like, hey, this guy, he, like, had an early robot. Right? Like, he treated it. He loved that thing. That's one of the things that blows <laughs> my mind in Star Wars is, like, drones are straight up slaves. I know. Like, and, and there's just, I mean, they, they just, the Jedi don't seem to have any moral problem with slavery in general. Not only of droids. Clones? But clones and I, I mean, um, there's slavery just all over the all over the the Star Wars universe. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like that's what that's what I love about Clone Wars too, because it like it really touches on like a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like the Mandalorian is gonna do that in like further seasons as well. But like, I definitely as you get you get to like see how like that's just spread out throughout. Like what the war does to everyone else in the galaxy. You're they like, were slave children too. Yeah, like yeah, these yeah. clones are literally like ten years old. Yeah. Like eight, yeah. ten, twelve oh, year old boys. Anakin and his mom. 
Yeah. Yeah, they were slaves, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. That so is, he, <laughs> that was, that's one of my that's one of my reasonings why I like Mandalorian yeah. is like yeah. I like the fact that they're exploring like the non you know, good versus evil. Because I'm like, are the Jedi really good? I think you know it's arguable that the ma- that the Mandalorians, the, the Mandalorians have better have higher morals than the Jedi. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, like that's why you just really like gotta like focus on what's happening when you're watching anything in the prequels, and because like if you you can like notice. If you like, kind of view it from Anakin's perspective, you notice like some of the schemey shit that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like they do some scheme shit and like make some super iffy calls, and that's why like I can't completely blame Anakin for turning over because like the Jedi are at one point are like almost the same as the Sith in his eyes. Because mm-hmm. like they break their own downfall. The Jedi. Yeah. Because, like, when Anakin kills Dooku, spoiler, if you haven't seen Revenge of the Sith, like, yeah, you're, you're way behind. But after he kills Dooku, the Emperor's just like, he was too dangerous to be left alive. <laughs> and then, like, when Mace Windu is, like, about to, like, cut down the Emperor, you know, like, spoiler, you know. Like, <laughs> he's like, he's too dangerous to be left alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, at that moment when he turns, it's like, what's the fucking difference between you two? Like, and Palps is going to offer me. The things I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is like if I were definitely if I were like a force user in the in that realm, I would definitely not be with the Jedi. Like I wouldn't be a Sith either because you know they just kind of like harness the darkest emotions and they're probably like miserable half the time. But like the Jedi code is, I think that's one of the reasons that like leads up to the downfall is it is flawed. Like I feel like at its core it's almost good. Like not to like get off on a crazy thing, but like it could be even like related to Christianity in some senses, you know, where it's like, Mm -hmm. like the morality of it is like aimed in a good sense, but then there's like, like the act, the people who act out, you know, certain things where it's like, people are like, isn't that a little hypocritical? Yeah. Like, uh, wait, did you really just enslave a bunch of clones? You know, like, Mm -hmm. so that that is one thing that I think is also freaking righteous about Star Wars is it, you know, it touches on a lot of like political things, even though it's in a like different universe. It's like, there's like these politics that get you your brain ticking like that, like hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They use the alternate universe to sort of explore cultural mm-hmm. themes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's how like like kind of what like the Senate is kind of for like in yeah, all those for movies. Sure. But like even throughout the movies and Clone Wars, just like some of like the debates that happen, it's just kind of like okay, damn. Like re- those are like the scenes that where the dialogue like really gets like your mind going about like what's actually happening and how it's like actually a super real thing in our world too. Mm-hmm. And yo, on like a on like a different note, like so last year actually here we did the May the Fourth uh be with you show. Yeah, yeah. May the fourth. So it's like uh on May the fourth, you know, it's like Star Wars Day, like a bunch of Star Wars nerds doing crazy Comic Con type shit. I don't know if that'll end up going down this year. Like we're doing a show on May second, but yeah, the, the fourth is on a Monday. So. Yeah, so it's it's awkward timing, but still we've planned like in moving into the future, like Definitely, like, because we are Star Wars nerds, as people can imagine if they're listening to this right now, but it's, like, still, like, onto a music thing, like, we like to tie it into, you know, it's, like, we want to do, like, an, like some more May the 4th type shows, like, mm-hmm. depending on when it falls, like, whether it's, like, next year, I would like to do a couple, like, just because it's, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's freaking fun, like, last year when we did it, we did, like, this mix at the end of, like, right at the end of our set, like, we had our robes and shit, and we were all, like, mm-hmm. Jedi'd out, yeah. we had our lightsabers and all that, like, fun jazz, and then, like, right at the end, we just had, like, this compilation of um, Star Wars trap beats like these Star Wars like yeah like these mixes and like we just like queued those up and just like trapped out like a bunch of people came to the dance floor and we're just like trapping out like Star Wars trap songs so we like to have a real world of fun with that too oh yeah definitely definitely can't go wrong with bringing the sabers anywhere yeah. <laughs> um yo I for, totally <laughs> totally lost my train of thought <laughs> Um. Yeah, I totally lost my train of thought. No, that happens to me like every five minutes. So, um, Clone Wars and uh, what comes after that? Rebels. Rebels. Is that? Is, I've is only that watched just the first movie? season of Rebels, but I'm. I know it's done now, but I'm waiting to rewatch it until like I finish like all the new Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. It's more childlike. I feel like like the. I don't know. It's still dope, but like. 
I, I feel like the story would be cool, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like it definitely like, picks up throughout the whole thing, just because Dave Filoni is doing it, and he does all of Clone Wars, and he helped with the Mandalorian and stuff, too. He should just be the president, or the CEO of fucking yeah. Lucasfilm. Or, What'd you guys think of the uh, Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> without, any, without any spoilers, just in case. Oh, I, I loved it. I'm just going to throw <laughs> that out there. I loved it. I, I liked aspects of it, but, like, there were a lot of things that I was really iffy about. But, yeah. But, like, there's just one thing. I don't want to ruin anything, but there's just one thing well, that just... It's sh- been out for a while. Well, just shits on the rest of the movies. Like, just, like... Well, the, yeah, yeah, I kind of see what you're saying. It's just, like, oh, that entire original story, all of the first six movies, oh, they don't really mean a whole lot, actually. These right. new ones are what's happening. <laughs> right, like, we're this just going to change... This the, is what Star Wars is. We're just going to change the rules as to I what the know. Force does. And but, like I said... It's kind of weird. Like I said, there's things about, like, the sequel trilogy that I really enjoy, just because the effects are yeah, crazy. The effects were amazing. But, like, yeah. but like if the prequels could have got made with, like, these effects and stuff, people would... And just think if they were made now compared yeah. to like 15 yeah. years ago or like I mean, 20 years ago. There's sort of the typical like plot holes, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not like the first three are perfect. I mean, there's no reason to have a trash compactor on a Death Star. You're just going to valid. You're just going to either, you know, incinerate the garbage or, or launch it into space. Yeah, you're, I would have just launched it into space. Yeah, like so space that, is huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. so there's, you know, <laughs> there's there's always these like weird flaws, you know, and part of that is like cuz we live on Earth and we think of, oh, you yeah, know, earthly yeah. things. Well, that's just a thing throughout all of Star Wars, you know? but like but like it's, but, it's but it's like when you start messing with like the plot and well, stuff, it's yeah, like yeah, the object quest for like the dagger that they didn't even realize was the object that they needed until they like, you know, like are at that spot. And it, if you're standing in that exact spot, it, oh my god, that was so ridiculous. Um, there's uh, a, yeah, there's how a, do you say that? That is a little ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like that whole thing just didn't need to be there. Like it was like that's 40 minutes of screen time. That was like that didn't make any sense. Yeah, that yeah. that really bothered me. You know, because that like. They just should have used more of that to, like, I don't know. I want. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, ah. if you're going to have an object quest, it actually has to be, like, key, like it has to be a physical key that opens the door or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It has mm-hmm. to be real meaning. It can't just be, like, oh, this shows us the thing. We're, well, you already know the thing you're looking at already has deep meaning anyway because it's yeah. the freaking leftovers like of the no Death Star. no shit go to the fucking, like, <laughs> the captain's room. Right, yeah. Yeah, like, if, like if it, they would have been, like, near the crash, that, I don't want to drop yeah. too many. Either way, no, yeah. that would have just been like, dude, <laughs> go to the freaking captain's. Way. Yeah, yeah. I, so, yeah, that, those things really, really bothered me. I felt like they made, like, what could have been, like, it, could, it had great, so much potential. It could have been a great movie, well, and those plot holes. Well, first like, of all, they shouldn't have switched up directors. They shouldn't have just randomly switched up directors. Yeah, like, that never helps. Because like, there's supposed to be three different directors. <laughs> then J.J. Abrams did Force Awakens. Everyone loved that. Mm-hmm. Last Jedi came out, and then they're like, "Uh oh, J.J., come do another one. And try and save it." And then, yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, I I really like the Last Jedi. <sighs> Least favorite. Yeah, you know, like there's so many people. It's weird how that's that's uh, a lot of like, people are in that camp. There's one other thing that they just brought into it, and I was just kind of like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just a little too much for me, and just like, see, because uh, they, because like I don't know, they put like Ray and Kylo on such these high pedestals, uh-huh. and, but it's just like that's like beyond any other Force user. But like in a way, like I kind of get it. But like there's just some things that I think are just a little over the top that they can like do. I don't like that aspect how Ray became like this amazingly powerful Jedi in such a short period of time. Yeah, like I really any training, but like but like uh like you know her and Luke on that island and all that. like it was that was just waste. I feel like it, I feel like that was wasted. Really? Like I feel like like it was it was visually like stunning oh yeah of course um, of course and it, was. it was i i felt like it was it was relatively entertaining and it was it felt in that same sort of a slow pace and the slow pace annoys the hero themselves <laughs> I, I i i like that about i just it. wish the pace of the movie was different and it wasn't just one thing happening the entire time uh-huh. and like i wish that like luke I wish Mark Hamill could have done Luke how he wanted to do it sure. rather than the director being like, you're going to do it this way. Because Mark Hamill, like, but they said he was, like, disagreeing with him almost the entirety of filming because he's like, Luke Skywalker is like this. He wouldn't be some, like, 
I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Something like that. And like, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. like if Luke Skywalker isn't down with like how Luke Skywalker is, there's, <laughs> that, I mean, that's, I think that's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, Hollywood is flawed in some in some ways like that. Like even sometimes when they try to build movies off books, it's like, why the hell didn't you just follow the book? Like especially if the book is widely praised and then you just like take part of it. Like not not necessarily in Star Wars case, but like in plenty of other scenarios, it's like people are like, like this happened in the book, but why didn't you do? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, Hollywood, get your shit together. <laughs> Stop focusing on so much money all the time. Like just make a great movie and worry about money second. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like it's it, it's always a gamble for them, you know. I mean, Johnny Demp just starred as Doctor Doolittle, and they lost their ass in that movie. How could yeah. you not think? I, how could how could how could that not be a? a they're running out of ideas. How too, could that Hollywood. not be a billion dollar movie? You know. And Johnny Depp got fired from Pirates of the Caribbean, and apparently, and apparently they're going to make new ones without him, which I w- probably won't be watching. Uh, I I gave up on that like after part one, anyways. So. My Myers big personality type is Loki Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow's an ENTP. That's that's me. Which even though I'm not like right. super like Jack Sparrow, but like sometimes I find myself in that phase, like especially under like the right substances, I'm like. <laughs> I definitely move like Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Why is the rum always gone? <laughs> I like the first three. Yeah, I, I can say I, I I saw the first one all the way through, and I've seen parts of probably the second or third, maybe both, but not all the way through. That's he for sure. Revisit. Yeah, not yep. my not my bag. On like a totally different note here, though, like. Me and Dawson, like, when we woke up this morning before we like engaged on our day of, we've been doing a bunch of random stuff today, but uh. We were talking about dreams. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's something people should start doing more. Like, just right when they wake up. Like, sometimes I'll do it with my little sisters or something. But, like, just being able to wake up and just, like, think about your dreams for a second. Because, like, sometimes it's hard to remember. But, like, if you can, like, recall some of your dreams, it's, like, some crazy, crazy stuff goes down in that dream world while you're just sitting there, like, unconscious and, like, I gen- gnarliest stuff. I generally don't dream. Or if I do, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, last night in my dream, like... I was at Sunset Cinema, and, like, there was a pizza on the counter, and I was just super mad because I had to leave for something, and then I came back, and, like, I demanded to see the rest of the movie from when I left, and they just didn't operate it, and I was just like, I just threw this pizza, like, up on the ceiling, pretty much, and just threw it everywhere, and I was just stormed out of there, like, knocked over their garbage cans. Sorry, that that was me. No, that's that's actually legit. I had, like, a weird dream about... There's some, I don't know, there's a bunch of weird stuff going on, as you can imagine, in dreams. But, like, there's this massive, like, ceremony going on at the end where people are, like, coming to meet this, like, witch or this wizard of some sort. And, like, there's, like, a huge gathering. And I remember being, like, all edged out by it. Like, there's, like, some suspense building. Like, some shit was about to go down. But either way, I don't know. I took, like, a bigger interest into dreams, like, a couple of years ago. I just started, I read this one book about lucid dreaming. And it's, like, actually a rigi- really sweet book. I, I think it's called... It's something about, like, dream awareness. Either way, uh, so I started just journaling my dreams after that. I don't know how many I've written down over the years since then. I mainly log in my phone because a lot of times it's easier to, like, type when you're all out of it than, like, actually write down. Like, sometimes when you wake up and it's dark a lot of times, too. So, like, just the phone is a nice tool for it. But I don't know how many dreams I've written down. Probably, like, over 700. No shit. Over the last four years, like, literally probably, like, on my other phone I had, like, a dream section that was, like, over almost 600 and then now on my new phone i've been like starting again and like i color coordinate like each one whatever and like uh i don't know it's like mind-blowing like and it's not always crazy you know every now and then it's just like oh i kind of remember like an adventure and like i remember it being dark or something like that and then every now and then it's like oh my god like i'm like i just gained insight into like something intimate in my life even one time i wrote like and I still, like, some at some point I want to revisit this, but I, I was working on this song at the time, and I I literally did two layers of harmony with myself. Like, I literally layered, like, I had the chorus part, and I was, like, singing that chorus part, and then the bridge and the chorus, like, intertwine at one point. So I, I, like, I sang both parts at the exact same time. I literally was, like, singing the chorus, and I was like, oh, what if I added the bridge in the background so it's, like, this, like... You know, when, like, the chorus is, like, chanting out and then the bridge comes in, like, a little offbeat, like, in the background. They're, like, merging with each other in this crazy way. And, like, I did that in my dream. And I was, like, I remember waking up and being, like, that is insane. Like, you can't, 
something you just can't do in real life is like sing two layers of vocals at the same time with right. yourself. Like that. So um, do you ever get any material for lyrics from any of your dreams? I'm going to grab a Diet Coke. You guys want anything? <gasps> um, I think I'm good right now. I think I'm good, too. Thank okay. you, though. Content for songs from dreams. Mm. Yes. Mm, I, n- not necessarily like, mm, I guess, I guess it is content, but like ideas like from dreams of like things I've experienced in dreams or like kind of things I like in my sound or like my topic about. Because this one song I have called Oh No, that's, yeah. that's about a dream. It's about like the sky spirit and shit. And I also... Sing about it in about a, a real th- dream or about a fictional a, dream? a real dream. Okay, a, a real dream. And then I also sing about it in a new song I have coming out at some point, Where? whatever that may be. But I mean, like that's like all I've basically gotten from like dreams, putting it towards my music. But I mean, like I don't know. Most of my music just comes when I'm like. <laughs> I feel like directly, directly, sometimes. Like, I'm trying to think of off the top of my head. That one that I was just telling you about, yes, for sure, that's like a direct influence, you know? And I swear there's been other times. I know for a fact there's, uh, there was like one time I was freestyling in my dream, and I like, I remember I like woke up, and I couldn't remember the whole thing, but I remember like being mind blown in my dream, and I like, I, I have it on my other phone for sure. And but like indirectly, I think that all like any artist would subconsciously be influenced by their dream, like even if they didn't know it, because like even some dreams that you don't remember s- trickle through your subconscious mind, like like deep in like again it's subconscious, so you're not always thinking about it. So like even though it might not be directly influenced, it could like carve a different type of style into your song, especially if you started writing right when you woke up or letting creative flow. But even like I've had. So, yeah, directly and indirectly. Directly less so, but indirectly, I feel like my dream... I mean, I feel like more, in, like, in the future, I feel like they'll continue to influence because, like, just because of how passionate I am about dreaming. But, like, I know there's, like, one... I've had some, like, live show dreams, and, like, some are, like, kicking where I'm, like, rocking a live show. And I remember one time there was, like, this one live show, and I... Is that the one where my set got canceled? Yeah, like, I just remember I was, like, performing or something, and... Uh, <clears throat> This one guy came up and he was like, oh, yeah, like, you got to, like, cut your set short. And I was like, I remember, like, again, this is a dream, just so everyone, just so everyone's clear. I was like, he's like, oh, yeah, like, you got to cut it short. And I'm like, how short? And he's like, like, you got, like, 10 minutes or whatever. And I was like, what? And I remember, like, being, like, instantly shook there. And then, like, he said something about, like, D- like Dawson not being able to perform. And I just, like, blew I blew a gasket in my dream. Like, I literally, I don't know why I raged so hard, but I, like, was, like, walking around and, like, throwing shit in the air. Like, I freaking raged. Like, I was, like, I, I, like, remember throwing shit in the air. And, like, at the end of my dream, I was, like, I remember I, like, had calmed down. So it was, like, kind of realistic in that sense. I was, like, oh, I'm, like, sorry. Like, whatever. I, like, I really let loose. So, like, that was kind of weird. But, yeah, I had some performance dreams for sure. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely I've had dreams about performing. Um, I literally had a dream the other night that me, you, and Sage were performing. Shout out to Sage, I love you. Um, but, I don't know, we were not, I think we were literally playing a corn song. We were playing Y'all Want a Single. Hey! But like, but, like, I heard the song perfectly in my head. Like, I was, like, listening to the song. Just because, I mean, I feel like I've listened to that song so much. But, like, but it was weird. Like, we were playing it. And then everyone was like, I don't know. Everyone was just sitting there, and they didn't even know what to think. I think I got. I think we got mad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it can. It can go both ways, though. Like I swear, oh, I wish I like almost had my other phone, but like I feel. Like I suppose I get distracted reading through a bunch of like weird dream snippets. But I don't know. I definitely remember having like a really, like right around that Afro Man show, like right around that time period. I remember having like a really good performance dream which is sometimes contradictory because, like, a lot of times the fears come through a little bit stronger, so you have, like, the worst-case scenario. Like, again, oh, hey, your set's over and done, you know, like, Mm -hmm. type of deal. But, like, I actually had, like, a really good one. I remember, like, just, like, killing the set and, like, a really popping crowd. And, like, that's actually kind of cool, too. And you almost, like, uh, again, in the subconscious realm, you almost, like, rehearse. Like, if if you actually remember a decent chunk of it, you're like, oh, like, you almost, like, it was like you just, like, sang some of the songs without even, like, 
actually singing it. Yeah. Uh, for our listeners, uh, the Afro Man show that he's uh, talking about is uh, mm-hmm. October 2018. He played October uh, 27th. Two, October 27th, 2018. Yeah. He played yeah. uh, here at the Commune Cafe. We put up a big tent on the parking lot, and Oaks and a bunch of other people uh, were opening acts for hours waiting for him to arrive oh oh yeah and we were dealing with a minor man <laughs> oh my god the yeah sound the guy sound was just guy like, he was like <laughs> i don't know and he was just like i don't know he was just he was too much possibly even three much <laughs> really? it, was a, it was a really kick-ass show actually and it was just cool to have a line out the door for the show literally like before we i mean we were supposed to sound check hours before sound check uh, it's hard to not get tangled up on some of the negative stuff but like the show was lit, and there's a lot of people there. It set, yeah, get set outside yeah, the Chameleon Cafe in a big tent. Yeah, it was the opening yeah. act, Oxy and the Gang. <laughs> yeah, well, and like when jo- I showed Joe up, and the Mechanics. Yeah, Joe and the Mechanics too. Afro-Man. Yeah, Afro Man. Yeah, it was a good time. Oh yeah, but then, so that very night, I had played a furnace set like mm-hmm. right beforehand. Before and you came here? Right yeah. before I came here. Yeah. And I showed up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get set up. We're going to sound check it, ready to go. Come here. And Oaks, like, runs up to me. He's like, I'm so happy you're here. And yeah, then, I was and sweating. And he's just, like, he's, I'm like, what's up? He's like, I have no idea what's going on. And, like, it was just a mess. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, work mode. Time to get this show started on time. Like, And it's and I was downpouring. Like, yeah, and I was already exhausted because I had just played a set, a metal set. I was just going hard. Like, I was already sweaty as fuck. And then, like, I show up there and then... Yeah, that's all happening. It ended up working out. We had some sound problems. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, yeah, if we could have had, like, quality sound. And if we were to play that show today, too. Yeah, for real. It'd be a completely different yeah. And Just like any performer can relate that sound problems are, like, oh, it yeah. would be the equivalent of, like, a sports player having a bad ref. Yeah, yeah. And being like, ref, are yeah, you, yeah, like, yeah. and I've, like, experienced that firsthand, too. And it's literally because it's, like, something, like, external of your control. Like, you're already trying, like, so hard and, like, yep. you're exhausted. You're, like, out here, like, doing your thing. And then, like, the ref is making bad calls or, like, the sound guy is making bad decisions or yeah. something. And you're, like... Like, come yeah, on, yeah. you know? Like, I think Joe Biden can feel you guys right now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been up on the news at all, but he has the worst sound people at his rallies. <laughs> like, it always sounds like he's talking out of a tin can. And, oh, my God, it's so bad. And then there's, like, feedback, and there's, like, a hissing. And yep. he has the wor- like he has total amateur sound people. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> yeah, shout, shout out to Joe Biden sign people, sound people. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, get your shit together. <laughs> For yeah. real. Dude, I... Oh my god! But yeah, still, it was fun. And on a, on another note too, uh, that night, so we're, like we after all the performances and stuff, we come to like the VIP section, which is inside of the Chameleon Cafe where we're sitting right now. And uh, Afro Man just was like chilling, you know, with like mm-hmm. all the people who bought VIP tickets slash performers. <clears throat> and uh, you know, we're like smoking, chilling. And I remember I like. I, d- I knew, you know, Afro Man probably has, like, a lot of opening acts. I'm sure every dude comes up to him and gasses him up and tries to give him some, like, oh, hey, like, check out my mixtape type thing. And he probably has, like, 20 mixtapes he's thrown in the trash over his last, like, whatever, two, th- two, three years of performing. And I'm like, so I didn't want to be that guy. So I was just like, whatever. Like, t- mm-hmm. to be honest, like, I was there to, like, get the people to expose my name, you know. But, like, right before Afro Man's leaving, he, like, uh, he's like, walks up and he, like, t- comes up to my group. We got a picture with him. Oh, yeah, no. Right, like, right, be, right, be, right before this happened, Afro Man was getting ready to leave, and he's walking out, and I was like, hey, Afro Man, you got to come sign the wall. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. And then he comes over there, yeah, he did his signature, got the Afro in there and everything. Yeah. And then right after that, continues to Jordan's story. Yeah, so, he, yeah, he goes up, signs the wall. Good catch, by the way, Dawson. I was like, I'm so glad someone said that before he right. like, walked out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, like, walks up to me and my group. It was, like, me, Dawson, and then the two other performers we were playing with at the time, Sam and Logan. Shout out those guys. Great. Tristan and Jackson. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Tristan told him a joke. Tristan yeah. said, like... <laughs> Tristan told Afferman... Shout out, Tristan. I fucking love you. But he told, like, Afferman, like, two jokes, and he just did not get either of them. They were <laughs> hilarious. And, and, and they were hilarious jokes, but Afferman just did not get them. And I was sitting there watching all this go down, and it was probably one of the most iconic things I'd ever seen in my life. It's like, Tristan talking to Afferman, like... Oh my god! I literally like, was. What somebody like, should have yep. got some video of that. I know. Yeah, I know. I mean, 
Or he was like, what? <laughs> like, I, don't, I remember Tristan was like, yep. <laughs> Tristan like said something weird right after. He's like, and then he's like, oh no. <laughs> That's so funny. It's literally like, just like, you're, like you're, this is like your moment as a comedian. The person just doesn't right. get the joke, and you're like, oh. and he just like totally wiped it off, like told another hilarious joke, and like all of us were like sitting there like, just like red face hysterical. <laughs> oh, so yeah, like a few iconic moments before Afro Man left, and then you see oh yeah, in those God. same like you know in those five minutes of him signing the wall, being told these hilarious jokes, people gassing him up, saying peace out. He's like walking by, he's talking to my group, he's like. You boys have a good night or something? He like says to us real quick, and we're like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, whatever. And I was just like, Afro man, you ever heard of a didgeridoo? And he's like, a didgeridoo, what? Mm-hmm. And I was like, and like this is like through my dig, so like I'm like sitting here and like, and he was like, oh, and then like, and like he starts like bobbing his head, and I just like kept going, like kept beatboxing, yeah. and Afro man spit like a full freestyle. I mean, it was like. Like at least a 16 bar freestyle. Like every that was like when nice. like people's heads started turning. Like hey, like what? Nice. And like people kind of started like coming yeah. over, like hearing Afro Man rap, and like whatever he was like rapping, rapping, and then like then he like stopped, and then I just like picked up. Like there's no beat at that point because no one was beatboxing for me or anything. But like I just like picked up and like did like an acapella, and I remember Afro Man was like hey, like I don't even think he knew I was one of the. Uh, shit, yeah. I don't even think he knew I was the opening act. Like yeah, to be yeah. totally honest, I don't even think he knew. I think he just thought I was like some random VIP guy. Yeah, yeah, because he didn't see our show. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Either way, um, he, so like he was like, "Oh, sh- okay." And I remember like, what, like his security guard was like, I remember his security guy like looked over and was like, "Hey," like it was kind of like this security, kid knows how to rap, quote unquote. I yeah. don't know you. Yeah. He didn't really have any security I know, with him. At the, he had like a I'm manager pretty, with him. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure it was just like his brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah he called like himself a, his brother. I was like, is like his actual brother? And he was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then I realized, well, that didn't clarify it necessarily. I know, right? He's like, it's his, his brother, you know. Uh, apparently, yeah, apparently him and Jackson were talking for like the entirety of when we were in here. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. He's but like, yeah, Shout but out yeah, we spit like I spit like whatever freestyle right there, and then I went right back in like right after I finished my freestyle, like build it, build it, build it, build it, and stop. <laughs> You know, like went right back into like a yeah. different, like a different beat, and he spit like another freestyle right afterwards. Nice. And like, I can't remember his ending line. I remember just like his ending line. Like he's like, like he's like, he said something across like the nation or some shit. And he's yeah, like, I played a show in a fucking gas station. Yeah, like like pointed at him. Like, so that that was like kind of cool. It was like a quick like applaud. Everyone's like, oh yeah. shit, like yeah, yeah. And then he's like, all right. And then just like do style. So yeah, then, yeah. He, then, then he was gone and out of our lives. Yeah, because I got high. In damn the car it. Later. Because I got high. Yeah, that was a pretty iconic. I mean, I'm, I would have never imagined when I was in elementary school and having my uh, best worst influence older brother uh, showing me because I got high. Tight, like songs by right. Afro Man, like literally, like some OG shit. Like, before I was like, Who is this guy? You know, like, he was like, I was gonna go to school. Like, yeah. just like having from like that to like 12 years later, like, or yeah, like literally like 12 years later to me, like, actually like opening for him. I'm like, Okay, that's like, yeah. it's like pretty cool. It's not like he's like a household name in hip hop anymore, but still, it's like a yeah. iconic moment. That's pretty legit, for Most sure. Definitely, for sure. Well, Most definitely. Anything else you fellas want to talk about? We could uh, take a little break. Um, I don't know if anybody else needs to use the bathroom um, or not. Should we just talk about the upcoming show, I suppose? Yeah, you just want to plug your shows, tell people where to find you on Instagram yeah, and wherever yeah, yeah. else. Well, okay, so we got a show coming up May 2nd at Yesterday's Gone in Brainerd. Mm-hmm. It's me, Oxy, and a couple other acts. And, yeah, it's from 5 to 10 p.m., and it's like an art exhibit too, or, or, exp- or whatever. The, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Whatever. There's gonna be a bunch of different local artists there, and like if you're an artist and you're listening to this, you can register to display or sell your art in the show, too. So, uh, you can just like probably find any of that information on either of our pages. So you can like look me me up on anything like Facebook, Instagram, uh, SoundCloud. Um, this little candle, L I L Q A N D L E, and yeah, that's how you find me. Again, I'm, just for those of you who are confused, it's Q A N D L E, like the regular spelling of candle, but with a Q. Some people just don't get it. I'm like, it's not that hard. Yeah, Jesus. I didn't get it either. <laughs> I mean, once you get it, you get it. Once you get it, you get it. I mean, you're not supposed to get it. <laughs> and then <laughs> you're not supposed I'm to do shit. I'm just, <laughs> you, you're the ones that look stupid, saying it wrong. 
<laughs> and like uh, valid. No, no, no. I usually just correct. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I usually lay the I'll, line down. Or I'll put those like that. in the description too. Wait, are you Quandle? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, are you stupid? <laughs> and uh, even like beyond like our coming up show. We're we're steady performing, and y- who knows? Like you might be listening to this in the future. Hello, future people. Uh, if you are listening in the future, who knows? This could be like Everybody someone could be listening, listening to like, it in the future. Yeah. Really. What if in like what if in like like a hundred years from now, there's just some people like looking back, like dude, these people are dead now. Yeah. If you are, guess what? Death isn't that good. I'm high. I'm scared. No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't know. Life kind of sucks, so death might not be that bad. But uh, anyway, me and uh, both me and Candle, we perform together often. We both have solo acts, but we come together and do some banging shit. We got occasionally other artists we perform with as well. And you know, I'm sure if you just check us out on our social medias or on whatever, you know, wherever you can find us, there will probably be shows at some point. I would love to be tour, and I'm gonna be doing all kinds of stuff. So again, our shows will be common, and our releases will be even more so so um and like uh by the way like for those of you who may not know i'm oxy uh all my social media stuff is official oxy spelling is pretty basic but o-a-k-s-e-y is my last name but again it's like you can find me anywhere on official oxy but if you just, pretty much if you type in oxy you should be able to you should be able to find it but yeah new music on the way new shows new life lessons i guess shit Oh, yeah. Lots of new stuff in the works. It's, like, on the brink of being released, but, like, we just think, I can speak for Jordan, too, that we just want to make sure it's absolutely perfect when we release it. Yeah. So. And they got plenty of time for post-production right now, right? Oh, yeah. Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> you ain't ready, all right? Yeah, we're we're doing some shit. It's about to go down. It's a takeover, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any last words for anybody? Um, you go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like think of like the most epic thing ever, uh, <laughs> and nothing righteous nothing. came to mind. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, if you're in a moment of peace, enjoy that peace. Uh, otherwise, prepare for war. Or just keep doing you, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you feel good, you look good. Shit. What else do you need? <laughs> um, yeah. May the force be with you. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning into the Electric Church podcast. Thank you very much to Little Candle and Oxy Thank for you, coming in and talking yeah. with me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah no it was problem. A lovely time. Thanks for the sake. Yeah, mm-hmm. no yeah. problem. Yeah, the sake was no delightful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that time too. All right, people. Well, uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Mm-hmm.